And hello from Hamilton. Welcome to highlights of this Benson and Hedges World Cup match between New Zealand and Sri Lanka. Both sides playing their second match in the competition. New Zealand having a first up win over Australia. Sri Lanka having a first up win over Zimbabwe. Well, just uh, exactly a year ago, these two sides were playing in a test match here at Trustbank Park in Hamilton. And Trustbank Park is one of New Zealand's most charming cricket grounds. A ground which is ringed by beautiful green hedges and trees, but where that new pavilion was opened only a year ago, the ground is very close to the central business district of Hamilton City and a good sized crowd in to watch the New Zealand team in action today. Now this town, Hamilton, has two games in the Benson and Hedges World Cup, but it's the only time that the New Zealand team actually makes an appearance here. And the newspaper billboard reflects the incredible interest in the city in the appearance of the New Zealand side. Hamilton provided the 64th venue in the world to host a test match last year and this most picturesque city is in full bloom with plenty of other things to do while you're in town for the cricket. The ducks on Hamilton Lake seem very content. It might be a town where cricket is the centre of attention today but the economy of the place is based on agriculture, on dairy farming and on thoroughbred stud farms and those horses seem very content at places like Matamata and Cambridge which are very close to Hamilton City. All right, to the cricket, New Zealand against Sri Lanka. Let's check on the condition of the pitch as we go out to the middle of Trustbank Park with John Morrison and Peter Sharp. What's it like, do you think, for today? Well, I think it looks pretty good. It looks uh, like very much a batting paradise. Very little uh, greenness about it. In fact, none whatsoever. A bit of bareness. Uh, but, but still move a wee bit. Does it, yeah. That suggests that it might not be quite as bouncy, but the pace has been very good over the last few games. Well, it has, uh, and we noticed with some early practice here uh, on the strip that they used for that Wellington ND game, the ball had some real carry. So I'm expecting a reasonably quickish pitch, but I think it might slow down as the day wears on, because there's not much grass, not much holding here. So it looks a pitch upon which many runs might be scored again today. It's been a batting feast already in the Spencer and Hedges World Cup. Let's check on the toss now. Grant Nisbet's out in the middle with the two captains, Martin Crow and Aravinda De Silva. The final preparation for the match can be made. That's for the patrons who are around the way block. As soon as the toss has been made, please leave the oval and make your way to your seats. So the final preparation... Martin Crow, this is becoming a habit, winning the toss. Yeah, it's good. Uh, we're going to bowl on this one, Grant. Why is that? Uh, just a gut feeling. I'm not, um, I'm not absolutely certain of what the pitch is going to do, but uh, we'll bowl and see what happens. OK, any changes from Saturday? Uh, Danny Morrison's in and Chris Keynes is 12th man. OK, all the best. Thank you. Aravinda, you're going to bat first. Would you have done that if you won the toss anyway? Uh, actually, it was a hard decision. And uh, in fact, uh, I think it, it was a good toss to lose. Good. So confirming that Sri Lankan team with just one change from the side which uh, beat Zimbabwe a couple of days ago. It comes at number 11 in the order where Anna Rasiri comes in to replace Kapila Vijay Gunawudani. So Mahanama and Samra Sekera to open the batting. Guru Singer who scored two centuries on this ground on the test match 12 months ago to bat at three. Followed by De Silva, Ranatunga, Jaya Surya, Tilakuratni who's the wicket keeper. Kalpaje, the off spinner, Ramanayaka, Wikrama Singer and Anna Rasiri. Here's the New Zealand side with one change also. Chris Cairns left out and Danny Morrison takes his place. It means the New Zealand batting isn't quite as strong as it was for the match against Australia. But Wright and Latham to open, followed by Jones, Crow, Rutherford who stays in the side and Great Batch is still out of the playing 11. Harris, Patel, Smith the wicket keeper, Larson the medium pacer, Morrison and Willie Watson. Right, so those are the two teams for this match. The second match for both sides in the Spencer and Hedges World Cup for 1992. New Zealand against Sri Lanka at Trustbank Park in Hamilton. Sri Lanka to bat first. Let's go to the action. So away we go then. The first ball of this match between New Zealand and Sri Lanka. Morrison to Mahanama. Frustration, he went for it, and one bounce down to Patel, at least Jones. Well, that was, he really chased that one, Samasekara, and I think he's hurt himself here too. Looks like the hamstring might have gone. Yes, he's, uh, you said he, he managed to get onto that one, didn't he? But he could have been out too, but he's uh, obviously got uh, something wrong with his leg. Here's the runner making marks on the... Good shot from Samara Sekera, and that's going to be the first boundary of the morning. That was a good shot. He didn't have too much room, but hampered by this leg injury, he still hit it very well through the cover boundary. Oh, 
over the top again. He might be out. He's caught by John Wright. So Sam Rasik is gone. Watson gets the first wicket. It's the sixth over bowl. And Calpert J has come out to run for Sam Rasika, but didn't need to be there for too long because Sam Rasika is out, caught by Wright, bowled by Watson for nine. It's 18 for one. Yes, well, he tried the big hit there over uh, mid-off. Didn't quite uh, get over the field there. John Wright taking a very simple catch. A good breakthrough for New Zealand, the early wicket, and probably well-deserved too. Well, bad luck for Sri Lanka. Sam Rasika injured his leg. You can see him walking off with Kalpa Jay, the runner. Yes. It's a good shot from Mahanama. Larson hesitated before he started. I think he thought that Jones was going to get it. And so that gives the chance for the extra run. They'll have to hurry. They'll have to get it. Bit of drama for the end of the over. It's a good drive, a lovely drive through the offside from Mahanama. No chance for the fielders, four runs. Well, that's the first drive of the day that's really pierced the cover field, certainly off the front foot. There has been one off the back foot, but that really was a magnificent shot, leaving the cover fields absolutely no chance of cutting that one off. The first time, really, that Watson has really over-pitched. And Mahanama there, very severe on that, and uh, that's just raced away to the boundary. But... Ball hooking it away, good shot by Girasinger, that'll go away for four, dropping short, angling down leg side, and four runs. Yes, it was surprising, oh, quick single here, no, he sent no! back, and then they had that hit, that might have been out, and they, in the end they get the single, but it's a hard way round. He didn't know what he was doing. He was just he was going for a walk in the garden, wasn't yes, it? Yes. Oh, dear me, look at this. Yeah! Oh, he's nicked it. Loud appeal. And hang on, Mr. Reporter says wait. And he says out. Just checking that the ball carried. And umpire Shepherd at square leg says yes. In fact, he's standing at point. And so the second Sri Lankan wicket has gone. Gurusinger making his way to the pavilion, and he is out for nine. Uh, Gurusinger reached for it, so look at it. Yes, it, what a good one. It, 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 the angle of delivery brought it in towards the off stump, then it straightened, didn't it? it? Rather more than held its own on pitching, just went away, caught the edge of the bat, Smith took it low down, and quite properly, uh, Mr. Reporter, the umpire at that end, looked across to uh, David Shepard, the umpire at square leg, who nodded his head, said it had carried, and Gurusina is history. And that's a good shot from Aravinda. Chase for Watson, and he won't get it. Through the gap, there's going to be a big chase there for Latham. He will not even get close to it. Quick outfield. A wee bit of rain that we've had this morning has not slowed the outfield. And so another boundary. It's only the second boundary Mahanama's had. Well, Gavin Larson, shot. he won't be happy with that. He prides himself on bowling tight line length, just a little bit short outside the off stump. Mahanama having enough time to get back and force that through the offside. Well, big half volley, and he's uh, got this one away, and that should run away. It's quite quick out there, the boundary, the upfield. So there's the 100 up from Sri Lanka. It's been slow going. They were sent into bat this morning, and they really haven't got the score going at all but the 100 coming up in the 30th over. And he's got the single here to bring up his 50, Mahanama. He's coming back for two. It might be tight. Willie Watson a little bit slow in getting it back. So two runs to Mahanama, and he brings up his 50s on to 51. Let's have a look at the wagon wheel. Plenty of dabs on both sides of the wicket. Only four, sorry, three boundaries. Nicely played by De Silva. A little bit of lift there for Patel, and my word, that's run away quickly, hasn't it? Well, that just shows you how quick the outfield is. He didn't seem to put much on that, but it absolutely flew to the fence. This will be tight. He's out. Marvellous play by Chris Harris again. And Aravinda De Silva short of his ground. He's run out. 
120 for three. Yes, well, it probably had to happen. We're going to see here. Was it really a single look? look in a fielder like Harris, you don't take those risks. He's not even in the picture. No, brilliant fielding from Chris Harris. Aravinder out for 31. And in the 34th over, Sri Lanka won 20 for three. Oh, he's got a hold of that one. He got plenty on that, and it flew past to Willie Watson. And four runs off the last ball of the over from Morrison. Yes, here we go. Danny just guilty of just being a little on leg stump. He came across a long way to play it, though. And he played that well behind square. It really raced away to the boundary. And hit firmly through the offside by Ramatonga. And Latham concedes a boundary. Well, this is what the Sri Lankans have to do now. Anything that's a little bit wayward, they've got to take toll of. And they might have to take one or two wrists as well. But that was very wide. And I think had he let it go, it would have been signalled wide. But I'm sure Ranatunga would have preferred the four runs instead. And really, he did wallop that one, didn't he? Ranatunga goes high, wide, handsome and four. Oh, it's beaten him and it's going to bring up the 150 for Sri Lanka with an edgy shot which doesn't give Morrison any pleasure at all and it takes Mahanama to 65. Well that was very well bowled by Morrison, a quick delivery and I tell you what he bowled that beautifully but of course in one day cricket with no slip there, anything that hits the fine edge or outside edge of the bats is going to race away for four runs, he's done that, in fact nine runs have already come off this over. Yes. And here's another, oh it's a good shot, it's beaten the field and... Ken Rutherford, the sweeper, way out there. He can't get round to it. And Mr. Reporter with a very interesting style. And, oh, he swung this away. High, wide, and handsome. He's gone. Taken out there by Ken Rutherford. Ranatunga trying to up the right. Swung it high, wide, and handsome, but not far enough. And he's taken on the mid-wicket boundary. What a fine catch that was, and Rutherford never looked like missing it. He hit it very well indeed, not quite hard enough for his own purposes. That was a massive blow, and Ken Rutherford, just watch him, he had it completely under control. Lovely catch, both feet off the ground, and um, everything looks splendid. 172 for four. And he's gone, caught and bowled. Well, Chris Harris picks that up. As Mahanama goes to drive, he can't keep it down, and Chris Harris takes a very good court and bowl. Yes, that was a fine catch. So those ones either stick or don't. Uh, but he did very well to control himself once the ball was in his hand, was upon him. Again, Mahanama driving when reaching for it a little bit, walking as he played the stroke, but he hit it well. Um, and well done, Harris. So, the new man, Tilakaratni, coming out to face a hat-trick. Oh, it uh, was a loud appeal, but umpire reporter says no. And signals the guys. There's another nudge for a single. Looking for a second, and oh, hesitation, should be run out. And is, well and truly. Just that a moment's hesitation. And Sri Lanka lose another wicket. Yes, we'll see here in the replay. The ball hit just behind square, the man off the pit fence came in very quickly really attacked the ball we'll see here picked it up last and a very good throw right over the stumps great piece of cricket New Zealand has certainly got back into this game haven't they Sri Lanka have lost wickets at, at times when they shouldn't have here is the Manhattan if you like and there was a little acceleration just after the 40th over but it's fallen away again you can see that Went after it and got caught. New Zealand skipper takes the catch. Tillicka Rockney goes for eight. 
And in the 48th over, Sri Lanka lose their seventh wicket at 195. Yes, we're going to say he decides to get after it, but hit it in the air. There's that man at short cover and good catch, Martin Crowe. Well, once again, Sri Lanka put more pressure on themselves. Tilo Karatni departs for eight. With Jay to face. They've had a bit of a chat. He's after it. I think Raman Ayka came out and said, look, we really have to get on with this. Raman Ayka running for all his worth makes it. Good throw by Morrison. Worked away by Kalpate, who's going to be a run out here. Ramanayaka is stranded. Rob Latham fielded cleanly. Ramanayaka running blind, really. He didn't look to see where the ball had gone. Kalpate tried to send him back. It was too late. And Ramanayaka is run out for two. Yes, we see here, this is suicide. Straight to the, straight to the fielder. There was never going to be a run there. This is the clean pickup, return. It's the pressure of the one-day game. Sri Lanka have got themselves into this position. By the way, they've batted in the last 10 or 12 hours. Latham had a quick look, and he could see that Ramanayaka was absolutely stranded. Mid-pitch. And it's a goodbye to Champaka Ramanayaka. Out for two. And he does get a single finally, so Sri Lanka bring up their 200. At the end of the 49th over, they're 200 for the loss of eight wickets. So the last over starting now, Watson. In the air, and a chance for a catch. Gavin Larson holds it. Kalpa J goes. And that's nine wickets down now for Sri Lanka in the 50th over, 202 for nine. On the replay here, he had to go after it. Full ball. Got, didn't get enough bat on it, got it high up the bat, and Larson, once again, that man Larson, he's been in everything today, hasn't he? He's been involved in run-outs, he bowled well, and that was a good catch. Well judged. Long time to wait, but safely held by Gavin Larson, so Kalpage out for 11. Swing and a miss. Watson bowling it very full. Just a shame, it was just a little wide there. In fact, it didn't miss by much, did it? Locked it away nicely. Now he should uh, get two here. Great batch is cruising around from mid wicket. Lovely flat throw by Mark Greatbatch. Watson. It's going to be a scintillating one. So that is the end of Sri Lanka's batting display here at Trustbank Park. And they finish on 206 for nine. So New Zealand have done well after Martin Crowe decided to send them in. 206 for nine after 50 overs for final Sri Lankan total, a score that can only be re regarded really as an average one, and one which is certainly beatable as far as that New Zealand are concerned. The top scorer, Roshan Mahanama, the opening batsman, he made a fine 80. Aravinda de Silva made 31. Ranatunga made 20. It wasn't too much in the lower half of the order, and only 12 boundaries were scored in that Sri Lankan score. Look at the New Zealand bowling figures. Willie Watson, the most successful, three for 37 from 10 overs. Chris Harris also took three wickets, two in consecutive balls, but a word once again about the bowling of Gavin Larson. Ten overs, one maiden, no wicket for 29. And Deepak Patel did well as well, going for less than four runs and over. Nine overs, none for 32. The first ball. Ramanaka driving and runs for right and he starts with a boundary. The World Cup's underway for John Wright. John Wright's very good off his legs here. He demonstrated that magnificently when uh, New Zealand played Zimbabwe at Rotorua. Really played his shots quite magnificently, and that's a typical John Wright shot, forcing it through mid wicket for four. Wright goes again over the top three mid wicket. Don't run, John Wright. That's four. 
<laughs> it's a lovely floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Reporter. Well, I'll say, Peter, the bowler is too short. I think it's, it's, it's a lot easier to pronounce. But uh, obviously the uh, Sri Lankan bowlers, they've had a lot of their preparation in Australia on the harder pitches there, which they get a little more bounce. But here in New Zealand, you've got to bowl a lot fuller than that. Latham down the ground. That's a magnificent shot for Latham to start. Rod Latham likes to drive the ball, bit of a front foot player there, had a bit of room to free his arms too and really hit that one very, very hard indeed, straight back really through mid-off, in fact uh, mid-off is a lot wider, I would have thought he may have been just a little bit straighter, but uh, that's four run, that's a very confident shot there by Latham. From Roger Wickramasinghe to right, and he's going again in the air through mid-wicket, and that's it well too by John Wright, that's his third four. Well, again, John Wright, very severe on anything short, likes to uh, just get back onto the crease and to pull, but this must be very disconcerting for Aravinda De Silva, the Sri Lankan captain. I'm sure the fielders are somewhat disappointed, let alone the bowler. Latham going over the top. He didn't quite get onto it, but he hit it well enough to clear the fielders. It won't go all the way. And Jaya Saria, who's very quick in the field, drags it in. Dear me, that came back and really tucked Rod Latham up, cut him in half. Yes, we're seeing here, this ball did seem back a lot. It was bold, it was a quicker ball. He put a lot more effort into that. It was well bowled that. Rod Latham was a little lucky that ball bounced. Yes, that could have had a nasty effect on stump vision as well. Mr. Reporter obviously doesn't know how to uh, fix the electrical side of uh, whatever it is. No, he's coming come eye together. Yes. Good shot. Beautifully timed. That's four. Well, that was the shot that Latham was trying to play to the previous ball. That one was just a little wider and it stayed out there. And here we go again. Plenty of room. Strong off the back foot. Four runs. Oh, lovely shot. That was a beautiful stroke. Rex Wright did his very best. They won't stop that. That's four rounds. Go to see can run forever in a day and he'll never catch up with that. But John Wright batting marvellously well. And uh, maybe he needed the shoulder injury just to tune him up. Yes, he looked a bit determined, didn't he? And it's a good opportunity for him in this game. Uh, the Sri Lankan attack, probably not as demanding as some of the others in the competition. And not a good day for him on Saturday. John Wright getting out for a duck. That was a super shot. And Wickram a singer, the bowler. This is Paul Moore. No fine leg. You pay the penalty if you stray down leg in that situation. And John Wright races on to 26. Oh, what a marvellous piece of beauty that was. Yes, Mahanama. John right down the wicket, he's tried to hit it over the top, he's just cleared Aravinda De Silva, who's after it, and that'll be the 50 up for New Zealand, a slightly streaky shot from John Wright, he gets away with it, but New Zealand bring their 50 up. A little bit of turn here, and that'll be four, that'll run away to the vacant third man boundary, and the outfield's pretty quick here, it's a bit deceptive, once it gets out there, it tends to just run on. And a super crowd, lots of uh, school children around. That was our pitch too. It was a thick. It was a thick edge. Uh, had there been someone there in the gully? A really gentle little run in from Kapalgi, and that's four more. So this is an expensive over. And there's more runs, and that'll run away for four, I would think. A long chase, and just pulled back. Well done. A 
Whitburn, the singer, a long chase and does well. And runs immediately for John Wright. That was a lovely shot, very well timed. No real power, but it just kept on going. There's a lovely fluency about his stroke play this afternoon, isn't there? Oh, lovely shot. That'll be four. No question about that. You see, what Wright is showing the Sri Lankans is that when you get the short one with a bit of width, the loose ball, in fact, you've got to hit it for four. Uh, they didn't hit many of them for four, and that was why, one of the reasons why, they only made 200 and 206. Yeah. Driving, that's a good shot. Oh, and he beats the fielder out there. That was going just too quickly for Gersinger. And Kalpajay not happy. Latham will be delighted, even though the face doesn't show it. Driving down the ground, and that's his 50. Right, just brings it up with a lovely stroke. It's his 24th one-day 50 for New Zealand, and his second, his third, in fact, in World Cup. And he's hit eight boundaries in that two, Peter. In other words, he's been very severe in anything short, anything wide, anything full. He's uh, really punished those balls to the boundary and picked up some very good singles. 67 balls, that's a very good strike rate, isn't it? 74.6. Oh, that's bowled him. A poor shot from Latham, didn't move his feet at all. Played a nothing shot, really, and it's got through his defence. Latham out for 20. New Zealand have lost their first wicket at 77. Well, I'm not so sure it's going to change the game too much, but really, Rod Latham should have come forward to that one. That ball did turn quite sharply, but unfortunate. Probably anyone that's... That's turned all day, but New Zealand lose their first wicket, 77 for one, 18th over. He's hit it in the air, but he's hit it safely in the gap between mid-wicket and long line. He's got four. Place to perfection by John Wright. And he's gone through to 55. And he's out, John Wright. He's caught and bowled. Caught and bowled by Kalpaje. And Sri Lanka have their second wicket. John Wright is out for 57. And New Zealand are 90 for two in the 23rd over. Yes, once again, we're going to see that ball was well up there. Wright got forward to it. Didn't quite get to the pitch of the ball. And it was a very good catch. Caught low down, changing direction, and he's followed through. But well, so bad at John Wright. He's better really. He really did well. he better well. 57, John Wright. And that's... Uh, Played away on the leg side, Martin Crow, and he'll pick up two. So Anna Rasuri, the left arm spinner, and that's the hundred up for New Zealand. Yeah. Calling for a run here, Andrew Jones, and uh, Ranatonga, that sloppy fielding out there, one hand, and then he kicked the ball on. And it's a bit tight. Andrew Jones coming back, but umpire Shepherd says, no, you're in. That was actually a good bit of, good bit of fielding in the end. But uh, Rana Tunga uh, had a bit of bad luck. He did well to stop the ball. It bounced out of his hand, and he couldn't stop himself from kicking it away. So Andrew Suri firing it in. And it was a good throw, but Andrew Jones well home. Hooked away. Oh, he could be caught. He is caught. Martin Crow is caught. Well, yeah. that is a bit, really a body blow for New Zealand. A rank long hop, and it does just shows you how these bad balls can get wickets. He hit it straight down. Uh, is it Champaka Ramanaka? I think it was down there at deep fine leg. He took a difficult catch. Well, it was going, traveling at a great rate. It had gone right through him, and he missed it. So a short delivery for Wick Grammar Singhi. And down it went. So Martin Crow out. That's tragedy for New Zealand. 105 for three. Oh, he's edged it. He's dropped it. Dropped it. Ranatonga in first slip has dropped Ken Rutherford. Well, what a tragedy for Sri Lanka and what an over.
Oh, it's a big shot in the air, but he's going to be safe. As Andrew Jones hits it well enough and gets it down to long on for four. Well, that's the first sign of aggression by Andrew Jones, particularly off Anna Rasuri. I mean, that could have gone straight up in the air too, couldn't it, Peter? My word. Yes! They'll have to hurry because Jaya Siri is a left-hander and close. Well, that's what happens when pressure's on. They're going to get another one too. That's untidy. Messy stuff. Very so poor cricket from Sri Lanka. Big hit by Rutherford. And six. Just made it over the boundary. Well, that's a big boundary out there. That was a huge hit by Rutherford. Yes, that ball pitched outside off. It was in the slot, really. Gentle, medium pace delivery. Rutherford just put his foot down the wicket and swung it right over mid-wicket for six. That's nicely driven by Jones. That's through. Rather over pitch from uh, Kelpage and Andrew Jones takes toll. Yes, this one was uh, right in the slot, as they say. Full. Jones was, uh, got onto the front foot. He only had to beat one of those men on the inner ring. No one sweeping, and the result was four runs. And Andrew Jones goes for the big shot and hits it very well to the extra cover boundary for four. Well, you see, that's what you can do to the medium paces, which they won't, can't do and won't do to the spinners, because there's much more likelihood that the ball's going vertically into the air then. But that was a fine shot, and just exactly the, the sort of welcome repost that New Zealand needed. He's got hold of this one, and he that's said it exactly well. Where you hit the and it's four. Ball. Good shot. Short, wide, and umpire Mr. Reporter leaves the scorers in no doubt. Four runs. I can't work out the thinking behind Mr. Reporter. It's the vigorous signal for the scorer. Then it's the more laid-back, leisurely sweep of the arms to the scoreboard. Yes. Interesting style, isn't it? It was a good shot, that, though. It, it was wide, it was short, it was asking for it, and it got it. And short again, pulled away just over the head of Guru Singer. And it races away for four more, pulling it away, Ken Rutherford. It wasn't too far from the outstretched hands of Guru Singer, but it uh, went away for four. And just picking it up, Ken Rutherford. And a misfield out there that will run away for four. Well, that was a clumsy piece of building. Calpage down there behind square, that's sloppy stuff. Appeal for ABW, he might be close. Umpire reporters looks at it and says, Well, how can I give you that? Because I couldn't see it. Gura Singer stood right in front of it. Won't have a double look at that. Bob Kinnis has come back with me. Well, I don't know if he did run across in front of him, but I looked look to me as if it could have been going down leg side, Peter. I think that too, but look at the umpire. He gave the indication that, well, I didn't really see it. in the air, he's caught, Jayasiri has got it. So, Jones has gone, one short of 50, caught Jayasiri, a bold Guru Singer for 49, it's 186 for four. Yes, well we see here this ball was up on leg stump, perhaps the pace of the wicket did Jones there, a little bit lazy, I think he meant it to hit it over that man in close, but he only succeeded in hitting it to him, but uh, well played Jones, he's done a marvellous job from his own. Picked up the run right from New Zealand. We're struggling there for a while. Two new batsmen at the crease, but he's batted well. So maybe the pressure coming back on to New Zealand. They've lost a wicket. 186 for four now. Rutherford's still there, but Jones is gone. Court Jayasiri, a bold Guru Singer for 49. Oh, Rutherford goes high, wide, and handsome over mid wicket for a magnificent four. That's so easy for his 50. A magnificent stroke to complete a very fine innings from Ken Rutherford. His 13th one day 50, his third in World Cup matches. Yes, this ball uh, 
as we're going to see, was pitched in short. Rutherford quickly in a position. Nobody up there. Good, strong shot. And if we look at his wagon wheel here, we see that uh, he's got his share of boundaries. He's also just worked four, though, the ball just around. Just four and one six, of course. Six, a magnificent strike over him wicket. And then a couple of other boundaries, mostly on the onside. In fact, looking at them, there's one being hit behind point and all the rest on the onside. Yep. There's the 200 for New Zealand. They need just seven further runs to take this match. And they've brought up the 200 in the 48th over. Yep. Well, that's through the gap, and that's going to go all the way because there's no one sweeping now. And Rutherford, once he got it through, he had enough pace on the ball to take it all the way. So it brings Mr. Reporter into action again.